Hey everyone, before we even get started on hybrid stripers, I want to remind everyone that next season, guided largemouth trips and big fish. Of course, I wish to acknowledge one of my clients, Tommy, who helped me figure out the challenging access to these local lakes, getting my riverboat in and out so I could now guide for you. It's going to be a great season in 2014. Along with a huge announcement I'm going to be making, but I can't tell you what it is right now, but it's good for you and expands my business in the marketplace. All right. Good fish. Of course, NOAA is really the National Oceanic Atmosphere Administration, a weather site that I monitor along with three other sites and marine radar half a dozen times a day during the season. And there's a reason for that. Huh? It's a small oh, bring him up here. Now, hey, everybody. Here's Bernie. You all remember Bernie. He's been out with me five or six times. Bernie was on the good old standby list when my scheduled client got stuck in a trial in court. So I called up Bernie, and by the way, all the weather indicators show that hybrid striper catching is going to be poor today. But the weather is going to be beautiful for boating, and Bernie, he really gets it. He loves to be out on the water, so we're going to watch him catch some fish. But I'm going to do something I haven't done before. This is going to be kind of like a verbal seminar as the video is rolling along. So I'm going to remark on some of the video that's being shown. Um, but I'm going to give you some valuable information. The question is, are you going to use it? So let me make my case what ends justify the means here by stating a few facts. Can you remember every detail of every fishing trip you've been on in the last five years? Certainly not. Well, I've been fishing for decades, and I can tell you the details how the fish were biting on the Kankakee River in 1997, say on June 13th. Let's see if some of this sounds familiar to you. When you go fishing, you catch a few fish, but nothing consistently, right? You use techniques that work on some days, but not on others. You don't seem to have any rhyme or reason to your fish catching. It's all kind of random. You try new things, but they don't seem to work for you. You do exactly what the pros on TV do, but you don't catch anything. In fact, you buy all their lures, and you don't catch a damn thing. You want to know why? Because there are pieces to the puzzle missing here. Let's stop and listen in on Bernie's catch first. <laughs> All right, folks. It's been a long, dry spell, but finally, hopefully, we're going to be on this some more. Great job, Bernie. You did a great job. He ran you all over the boat. Now, you've heard me say it in the past, every body of water has its own personality, just like people do. Let me put things into perspective. Before I began my fishing career, I used to write down all the information on my fishing trips. Then when I got a job in the real world, the industry that I was in tracked an enormous amount of data. And I found the more data that you tracked, the better the result. So what the hell does data have to do with fishing? Well, it's all in the detail, folks. Hey, Burn, you got a striper on. Yep, nice. Another nice one. Number three today. Now, I recognize the significance of recording data. It's a discipline. If you want or have to track data, you'll come to understand it pays huge dividends. He did. He hit it real high. That's the hardest hitting one so far. Yeah, that's cool. I love to see you. I, I wish that I could get a picture of your face. It looks awesome. Let's get a photo here. Because it identifies catching trends in relationship to weather, baits, sun, no sun, water temperature, water level. It all goes hand in hand with catching. Now, if you go fishing once a month, even once a week, it's not hard to track the data. Right now it's November. I've been fishing since February, 
and it's looking like about 190 plus days on the water and I track all that data. Now let's get back to Bernie here for a minute. And we didn't catch any really big hybrids like we had been in the previous two weeks. Here's a few photographs of those. Yet Bernie and I's expectation based on the data was we weren't going to catch any hybrids. The challenge is is to figure out how to entice the fish when they're in a negative feeding mode. Now I don't think I've ever shown this clip to anyone but I want you to take a look at this here and I want you to pay attention. I'm going to freeze this frame and note where I am. If you're familiar with Heideke Lake look at the towers. I'm in the North Pool. I'm in the middle of the lake right now. I set the hook on a fish in about 13 feet of water and he went straight to deep water in about 18 feet. Now I ended up shutting off my camera because the fight was like going on endlessly. Now I want you to watch where we pick up. What it is, but it's this big. fish ran to the bank and just would not give up because it was a beast. So you watch the video and let's continue where we left off. Now I guide on four different bodies of water. So if I'm not on the Kankakee, I might be on one of three other lakes. And now I'm starting to track a whole new set of data on the new bodies of water I'm fishing on. Big head shakes. But look, technology spoils us today. My iPhone records the trip verbally and every detail that I feed into it. Then I can dictate it off my phone onto my desktop and it writes it all down. Now if you have any computer savvy whatsoever, it'll help track the data and everything that you record by season, by weather, by baits, by wind direction. It's really, really cool stuff. Oh, big striper. I gotta be truthful with you. For as hard as this fish fought, I was disappointed in its size. I thought it was gonna be 17 pounds. Twelve pound striper. Now you remember this guy? He hooked nineteen stripers and caught seventeen, some real whoppers. If you haven't seen this video, go to YouTube and go to the search box and type in Heideke Lake Striper Bonanza. And I'm gonna make a bizarre statement here, but I saw these fish schooling up three days beforehand and I was sitting in my living room. You might think that's a joke, but that's literally the God's truth. And uh, don't forget, uh, you can monitor my website, you can email me on upcoming seminars, locations, dates, uh, fishing shows, if you'd like to hear more information. Now I've been saying for years and telling clients you should keep a journal and implement weather into that journal as part of your fish catching especially if you're just starting out fishing you got 20 30 years of fishing ahead of you start recording the trends now it'll help you in the long run by the way richard are you listening now at the end of the video i'm going to list all the data that i record and you don't necessarily have to use it all but the attention is in the details Okay. Start identifying weather and circumstances, and a trend will start to emerge. Now let's listen in on Eric's catch here. Oh, maybe ten, maybe. Well, I told you if they got any bigger, they're gonna give you a fight of your life. Was that cool or what? <laughs> Just took off. That's like a nine-pound, nice big nine-pound striper. Adios, my friend. All right. Here we go, next one. Now ladies and gentlemen, the moral of the story here is to think back to the best fishing day you ever had on the water. Now look at the data that I listed in the middle and the end of the video and fill in the blanks. Now unless it was recently, you can't do it. Especially if it was in that detail and if it was like five, six, ten years ago. Well you have an opportunity right now to travel back in time and hear the details 
of the best fishing day you ever had on a body of water that you fish on every day or every week. Except you're telling the story from 10 years ago. And you'd be surprised how relative the information from back then is today. It'll make you a better angler. This is Captain Bob, Kankakee River Valley Guide Service. A family was down fishing on the river. This is the garbage that we found on the bank. Unbelievable. Love that sound. <laughs>